Welcome to Sexology, a podcast that untangles the science of sex and pleasure. And now, with this week's episode, your host, clinical psychologist, Dr. Nazanin Moali. Hello there. You are listening to episode 271 of Sexology podcast. Today, we're going to talk about one of the skills that you guys wanted us to talk about for the longest time. We had few episodes on this, but when I asked you guys about sexual skills series and what kind of sexual skills you would like to master and learn, you guys wanted me to talk about lasting longer in bed. In the past, we had researchers, psychologists, coaches talking about this. Today, we're going to approach this topic from a different angle. Our guest is one of the most recognized performers in adult film. So as part of the beginning of the episode, me and him talk about some of the strategies that he personally has used and teach his clients. And at the end of the episode, I'm going to talk about some of the strategies that I teach my own clients. So you'll get both sides of these interventions. As I mentioned, our guest is Eric Everhard. Eric is one of the top paid and most recognized performers in adult film of last two decades. He has won numerous male performer adults and has number of different accolades. Since then, he has dedicated his time and effort to helping high achievers by teaching them elite level sexual skills in order to master the bedroom like they dominate the boardroom. Before we go to the interview today, before we're going into our conversation today, I would like to thank our sponsor, Promesan. Promesan is my personal favorite premium sexual wellness brand. I personally use a number of their products. Right now, I have their lubricants, arousal gel, and supplement in my bedroom. I will share with you more about my experience of using their products throughout the month. The way that this partnership came about is one of the journals and one of the articles I was I was contributing to. They they wanted me to talk about some of my favorite personal sexual health products and I talked about them and that's how they they reached out to me and we started this partnership. They have a range of different products. You get free shipping on orders over ten dollars. One of the things I really like about it. You get to have 60-day no-hassle money-back guarantee on all products. So if you're using something, it's not working for you, you can send it back and get your money back. You can check out their product at promescent.com, spelled P-R-O-M-E-S-C-E-N-T.com. The link will be in the show notes. And if you want to give us an extra love, you can mention that you found them through us, sexology. So we'll get credit for it. They'll continue their partnership with us. All right, without further ado, here's my conversation with Eric Everhart. Hello and welcome to another episode of Sexology Podcast. I am so excited to welcome Eric Everhart on our show. Eric, welcome to our show. Hey, thank you for having me. I am so excited to have you on my show. I listened to you several times back in, in the midst of pandemic when, when the clubhouse was very active and I've been following your Instagram account. And I know that you have tons of really good actionable plans that like skills, things that people can apply. So I'm very excited about this conversation. So today we're going to talk about performance anxiety lasting longer. What are some of the, what are some of the mistakes that you see that people make when it comes to this? So the, the first thing that I've always seen that, that most guys like where they mess it up, especially when it comes to last longer in the bedroom, is that they don't practice like they play. And I fundamentally think this is one of the biggest problems because, OK, like let's use an example that everybody knows, Tom Brady, right? Tom Brady doesn't walk out there, sit on the on the sidelines, eat Cheetos for, you know, 16, 18 weeks, get fat. And then suddenly he decides, you know what? I want to play in the Super Bowl and I want to throw some touchdowns. It's not going to happen. So where I see guys messing up is that the fact that they're not preparing their bodies for the big game when they're actually in bed with a woman and then they get there and everything falls apart. So they've never conditioned their body to where it would have the ability to last longer. You know, and fundamentally, you know, I see 
And this goes back to a lot of the things that I teach my clients where it's like I attack lasting longer from multiple angles because it's there, there is no quick fix pill, right? And, and as a guy who had to combat it myself, I mean, look at my situation because I've had it before where it's like, oh God, I, got, I have to get this under control. And you're on set and maybe I want to have an orgasm in 30 seconds. And now I'm looking up at the clock and I'm like, oh shit, you know, I got... 59 minutes and another 30 seconds to go. Well, I better figure this out somehow. Otherwise, I'm not getting paid. So it, it puts another layer of, of, of need and expediency upon it. So, you know, if I look at guys, you know, first of all, when I go back to the whole practice like you play, the problem that most guys have is, you know, if they're going to jack off, if they're going to masturbate, they're thinking, okay, like they do it in the shower, they do it in the bathroom, they do it first thing when they wake up, and they grab it, they're like, okay, let's just get this out of our body as fast as possible, right? Well, now you've just set up your body to say, you know what, if somebody, anybody touches this thing, we're going to fire off in 30 seconds. It, it, would, it would be like, you know, Kobe, instead of aiming for the net, you know, he, named, he aims for the stands with every free throw, and then in the game, you're expecting you're going to hit the net? It's not going to happen. So that's the first thing that I see where guys really mess themselves up because, you know, they are not practicing every single day like they're in the Super Bowl. And you, you got to look at your sex life from that. It's like, you know, if you want to impress a lady, you know, you, it, this, this can't be the time where you're trying to figure it out then. You need to go into the situation with your shit together because you're going to be judged on it for, you know, for good or for bad. A woman is going to judge you by your skills in the bedroom. I don't know exactly if all women judge men because of that. But I, I think it's definitely help guys, the confidence and also because of the arousal gap, right? There's a huge arousal gap between women and men. So if somehow we can close the gap, that would be great. But I, the reason I'm bringing it up because just men are so nervous. Like if they think if they cannot last like 30 minutes, they feel it's the end of the world. What do you think about that? Well, it's it, see, and that's, and that's the misnomer. It doesn't need to be 30 minutes, okay? What you need is conscious choice. That's it. Like why? Well, because I, I've seen it go the other way, and I've worked with a lot of men on the other issue where they fundamentally, they have guilt and shame about not being able to, you know, go forever. So they train their bodies to go forever, then they can never have an orgasm, right? And then you end up with the same problem on the opposite spectrum, right? Because then, you know, every woman says, oh, man, I want a guy that can last a long time until you get a guy that can last forever. And then they hate that too, because especially, you know, the vaginal tissue is tears and so more sensitive you know, when I've seen women, like, they're like, okay, this is great. This is great. And then from the time they start to get sore, it's like, it ramps up super high to they are pissed off. Cause they're like, Hey, just finished. Like I'm on fire. My pussy's on fire. I want this over. So your number of minutes from the beginning of pain to they want it over is going to be really short. And if you can't, you know, you're struggling to get off because you've spent the whole event so focused on her that it's almost like your dick isn't even a part of you. Now you've created just as bad of a problem on the other side of it. So what I tell guys is, you know, it, it, it's all about conscious choice. You should be in control of when, full stop, at all times. So, you know, if, if, it's, if you're consciously saying, okay, we're doing a quickie in the, in the kitchen, five minutes, you should be able to have it out in five minutes. But if then you're saying, okay, you know, like we've got, we've got time, kids are asleep, we can have 30 minutes, then you should be able to pull out 30 minutes. So it's not... We're not looking at it from the perspective of it needs to be a set amount of time, but you have to be able to choose that time and be able to that. control it because it is controllable. I 100% agree. I think conscious choice is the key term there because sometimes people, as you said, I had clients that would de delay ejaculation and it's one of those really, really tough things to address. And I know that the partner often are dissatisfied because of the pain, because of the discomfort. And sometimes even I have many clients that unless they pull out and they start masturbating themselves, they're not going to be able to climax. And that can also create some dissatisfaction. But I love this idea of I'm in control. It's like part of my body. I don't need to be worried about it. I don't need to think about my taxes, all of those things to delay it. It's just a matter of like, I'm in the moment and I make that. I can make that happen if I want to, which is I love the analogy with the sports that, uh, you know, many, many people, because they're anxious, they avoid thinking about it, saying that, okay, hopefully this time is going to be different. Or they're avoiding sex, and it's never going to work. Well, I, I, I've said time and time again, I said the two worst words you can ever say, the two words, I hope. 
I, I said er, every guy should remove those from their lexicon right now because whenever you use the words I hope, you are now presupposing, just from almost an NLP perspective, you're presupposing that it's going to go wrong. I hope I get hard. Well, now you're assuming that you're not going to. I hope I last long enough. I hope she likes me. I hope blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's just, it's you're immediately presupposing that it is going to go horrible rather than having that unshakable confidence in yourself from the beginning that, hey, you know, this is going to be awesome or that I, I have total control, right? I think that's amazing, right? Kind of like thinking about like I have the ability to cultivate the skills and I have the mastery and it's going to be great instead mm-hmm. of kind of going based on hope and faith and we'll see. I, I love that. And you know, one thing that's really interesting to me, adult entertainment is like an Olympic of sex. Like, you know, the same way that then we're seeing like athletes on Olympic, they're doing so well. And when I'm running in the gym, it's not going to be the same. <laughs> it's the same for performers as well. Our performers at times also struggle with performance and kind of lasting longer. Is that common among performers? Oh, yeah. I mean, so within the business, we were always put into different categories and they were unspoken, but everybody knew them, if that sort of makes sense. So you had, you had, you had the guys that were called A-listers, you had B-listers, you had C-listers and you got paid accordingly and everybody treated you accordingly. And that was really where it would be separated, right? Like I always said many times, like if you were going to be, you know, the upper elite echelon for a male and get paid the top rate, like I did, you need five things. Okay. So number one, you need to be able to obtain a hard-on anytime, any place, ideally within, within about three minutes. Number two, you need to be able to ejaculate when you're told to, not before, ideally within about two minutes of being asked, right? Number three, you should be larger than average. You don't need to be hung like a horse, but if you're Tiny Tim, you're not going to be in the upper echelon. Number four, you need to be decently good looking. Doesn't mean you need to be Brad Pitt. But if you're the hunchback of Notre Dame, eh, there's a lot of A-list ladies that are going to say no. They're just not going to want to work with you. And then the most important, number five, is you need to be able to bring out or extract something from your partner, from the woman, that would not have occurred if you specifically were not in the scene with her. So if, if, if as a guy, if for that, that hour, that hour and a half, if you could make her forget that you got crew, you got lighting people, you got makeup, you can make all that stuff disappear for her for that 60 minutes. And she can just, you know, have orgasm, have her eyes roll in the back of the head and just forget anybody is there. Now you've done your job. And if you can bring those five elements together, then you can be one of the top guys. Well, even listening to the one and two, kind of like getting erection on demand and ejaculating on demand, I I feel anxious for men (laughs) because I know those are the one of those scary thoughts that they have. So is that the skill that performers cultivate or that's something that's like more genetic? You know, I think it is cultivated. Now, I'm not going to discount that there could be genetic differences because, I mean, I've definitely seen it, right? So, I mean, you know... Having obviously seen more penises than any straight man should ever run across in his life, you will see really quickly, right? As you see all the different actors, you'll see that there's a whole cornucopia of differences, right? So you'll have guys that, you know, they've got super curve. You have some guys that when they're hard, they still have like a spongy quality to them. You have other guys when they're hard, it's unbreakable like steel. You have all these differences, you know, and those are just the genetic differences, right? So and, and the same thing, you, like you'll see guys that they get blood flow in really quickly, but then the blood flow will leave really quickly. And then I've met guys where, hey, it could take them maybe another minute or two to get the blood in there, but the blood doesn't want to leave so fast. So these, I would say, are, are the genetic differences. No different than, you know, the, if you were to look at sports, you know, genetically, hey, you'll have some guy who's six foot five, six foot seven, maybe another guy's six feet. Someone has longer arms, longer limbs, has more power in a specific way. All these factors. But at the end of the day, it still will come down to mindset. And it's your ability to be able to block out all the noise, all the distractions, anything else, and just focus on you. So if you can, if you can channel your focus into, first of all, not hearing or, or seeing anything else other than yourself, and then if you can purely focus on the sensations of your dick, then you've got a real good shot. Because I've always said, you know, from my experience, I really broke it down to you having, as a man, you've got two separate heart bonds. So one I call the, 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 the erection of the mind, and then the other one is the physically created. And they are 100% separate. Like I have completely separated them in my life, right? And the problem is most men 
collapse them into one. So as soon as a guy doesn't get hard, he doesn't have the erection of the mind happening, he freaks out. Oh my God, my dick doesn't work. It's like, wait, hold on a second. You know, if I relied on that for my career, I would have had a career for a week. Right? Amazing. Because, because here's the thing, like in any guy could try this at home, right? Monday, even pick the same time, pick one o'clock in the afternoon, take Monday, go make out with your girlfriend, see what happens. Maybe you get a heart on your pants. Maybe you don't. Now try it Wednesday. Maybe it happens. Maybe it doesn't. So the problem with the, with the psych, psychologically created hard on is that it's not reliable and it's not repeatable. We don't know when it's going to happen and we don't really know what triggers it because we could have the same stimuli. And today it's like, oh, for whatever reason, your body says, I'm super horny. Like this thing is literally wanting to burst out of your genes. And then the next day, nothing. And you then there would be no rational reason why. So I always say, like, if you can cultivate that, great. Don't rely on it and don't stress out about it if it doesn't happen. Because if you focus on skill, the power of skill jerking off and you just purely focus on the sensations you're having, which is a maneuvers of consciousness, the consciousness thing that I talk about, then the pure good feelings will create a heart. But you need to focus purely on those feelings and remove everything else. It needs to be a very, you know, somatic event from that perspective. Well, I think this point that you highlighted, the kind of masturbation and its role on people's kind of like come quickly is huge. Like I, I, I talk to my clients that from the childhood, they start masturbating very quickly in the bathroom. The idea is let's, let's get it over with as soon as possible. So my mom is not walking over, like my mom, my sister is not coming. So you're training yourself lifelong. And I love that this element of shifting your perspective that you're talking about, kind of focusing on sensation, kind of focusing on what shows up for you versus kind of like relying on kind of like a psychological, purely psychological thing that will help you to, to get, get you to the place that you want to be with con- making a conscious choice. And sometimes I, I find that people, when they are leaning into their fantasies, that also can create struggle because some of the fantasies are really too hot, uh, too hot and exciting and it need them to come qu- quicker. So I think it's, it's interesting to learn the skill of pra- pra- uh, practicing and focusing on sensations. When it comes to foreplay, especially men who are struggling with kind of like maintaining erection or a premature ejaculation, they're very nervous. I hear from my clients that the idea is they just like, they don't want to do anything. So, uh, they, so they're not kind of like ejaculating. So what are some of the tips you have for our listeners that they want to kind of navigate a successful foreplay? Well, okay. So if, if we're, if we're looking, if we're looking at from the perspective, so do you want me to attack the anxiety piece first, or do you want me to attack the lasting longer piece first? Let's start the anxiety first. So I think to me, it's, uh, anxiety is level one and the lasting longer is level two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so when, when you're sitting there and, and you've got anxiety, right. And you're, you're getting things going first off, you know, I'll, I'll ask guys, especially when I'm working with them, I say, okay, well, we, we need to first discover where in the chain of events that anxiety is taking place, because it'll always be different for some guys. Some guys, it's the minute they pull their pants off, anxiety. Other guys, they're fine there. The minute they got to penetrate, anxiety, right? So we got to say, okay, well, where in the chain first is it happening? But one of the things when you've got anxiety that you need to really focus on is you need to be in the state of doing the entire time. Okay. And I, I've, I've found for me, um, because this was probably my second year in the business. It was probably like, I think it was nine, the year 2000, it was 99 or 2000. And there was a famous art photographer. His name was Larry Sultan. And he was going around on some different sets and he was shooting photos for what became a big art book called the Valley. And so he came on set and he was watching me work and he was blown away because at the time he had never seen something of that level of intensity and athleticism. So, you know, I'm, I'm all finished. I come out, I'm puddles of sweat everywhere. The hair is all messed up and everything. And he just looks at me he's like, wow, he goes, that was incredible. And then he asked me this question that never has left me ever since then. He goes to me, he says, so what were you thinking in there? And I just turned to him. I said, nothing. <laughs> It's like, what, what am I supposed to be thinking, right? And he was just kind of shocked. And I, as I started to really think about it over the course of my career, and one of the things I was able to cultivate was something that I call the space of white noise. And I did it by purely focusing on what I'm doing. And it's no different when you look at it 
you step back and you think about, okay, you know, anybody that ever has a meditation practice, if you were to just focus on your breath, when you are truly focused on the breathing, the in, the out, you're feeling each breath, relieve your nose, come back in. There's no thoughts then, you know, as a, as a gym rat, you know, when I used to be in the gym, it was very similar. You know, any guy that's ever lifted weights, if you've lifted heavy weights, you get 300 pounds on a bar. You're not thinking about what's for dinner. You're not thinking about your girlfriend. Like there is no thought other than just this weight needs to move or I'm going to die. And it's the same perspective that you need to bring into the bedroom. Specifically, you know, I would be using it when you're, when you're doing foreplay on the woman. Okay. This is the time where, where that level of focus needs to be on pussy eating because now you're giving yourself a chance to let your adrenaline leave. Because especially when you get some sort of adrenaline, I mean, it could take an hour for that to finally leave your system, right? And for you to just get in the groove. So, and one of the things that I will often tell clients, I said, well, here's the thing that you want to do is you want to create a positive feedback loop in your brain. And you do that through something I call the hint of blood phenomenon, right? Which involves your ability to use some skilled jerking off while you are pussy eating, because what you're doing is you're creating a sleight of hand where you're using pussy eating, you're using it as a pleasurable instrument for the woman, but you're also using it as a sleight of hand deception, because this allows you to be able to get your, your shit together, <laughs> literally, right? And she's not going to notice anything. If your pussy eating skills are good, her eyes are rolled in the back of the head. She's not going to notice that your hand is skillfully just getting that 15, 20% blood flow in there because it's all you need, 15 or 20%, right? Because as soon as you get that 20% in there, your whole body just calms down and you realize your dick works. And when you have that realization, now you relax. And if you were to go into from there into any sort of oral situation on yourself, you know, I've always said, you know, the funny thing about the penis is if you've ever watched, and maybe you haven't, but if you have, you'll understand what I'm talking about. If you've ever watched the world's strongest man, they have an event where you'll have these 300 pound strong men that will, they will strap either a semi truck or a plane to their backs. Oh, God. And they have to, they, and they have to run with this, right? And so when you watch them running, okay. It's like, it's these little baby steps and they're just grinding it out. And it's like, they're, 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 they're taking three inch steps at a time at a time. And then they gain, they start to gain momentum. They start to get inertia. And then you see at the end of the event, they're literally almost like semi running with a, with a plane behind them. And you got to look at your penis the same way. It's like the, the first 20%, 25% blood flow. That's the hard part to get from 25 to hundred percent. Easy. That's not difficult. It's that first part. So that's where you need to focus your time on. Because if you can get that 20% in there, now, as soon as, you know, if, if, if you guys are reversing who's giving oral to who, now when you flip over, you're not coming at it with, you know, with a flaccid penis. You have some blood flow, very easy for her to get it from there to up. You know, there was a, a, a kind of famous thing that I did way back in the day that uh, still blows people's minds to this day because it was done completely drug-free and all mindset. And there's a famous square in the capital of Budapest, mm. in ca capital of Hungary in, in Budapest. And I had sex with a woman there at high noon in the middle of the square with tourists watching and police across the street. And oh the my police God. did come to arrest <laughs> me later. And anybody that doubts me, this is, you can see it online. It's, it's, there's no doubt about what I did. But when you look at what I do and I break it down for my clients, you can see where I'm putting all these things that I talk about. You see me putting them into action, okay? Because there's no way as professional as I am that completely flaccid, I'm not able to pull it out and know confidently that I would be able to get an erection knowing that I've got this crowd of tourists yelling at me and I have police across the street that very well may have a problem with what I'm about to do, right? So you need to set yourself up for success, and you do that by doing these things that are going to create the right mental state and are going to create that positive feedback loop in your brain. Because like I said, once you've got that blood flow, now, instead of you thinking, I hope, it turns to, I know. And I was like, oh, I know things are going to be okay. I know I'm going to get hard. And then, you know, now more blood flow. And the thing is, more blood flow you get, it gets more blood flow, right? So as you get more blood flow, you're like, oh man, this is working. This is so great. And you get more flood. Like, oh, I'm the champion. And then, you know, you got massive erections like, I'm the king, right? <laughs> but I mean, that's what you're looking for. That's, I mean, it, it, that's what any guy wants to feel. And that's how you get that process going. Well, this is amazing. And the fact that like, I think it's a dream of many, many men being able to get an erection, maintaining an erection, such in a stressful 
real with a real stressor outside so i think it's it's wonderful that you say with the techniques and strategies and practicing that's something that people can at least arrive at and most people are not often in that situation or even close that it's all in their mind and a kind of changing mindset is is the key mm-hmm. as you mentioned so now like we're a champion we we did the uh, practicing outside we did the foreplay now we had the grand finale which is like the heart of stress and anxiety of many of men what can we do to deal late ejaculation okay so if you're in the moment with a woman first off there's going to be two different aspects of it okay so when i work with clients and i help them overcome this there's an aspect of it where i am using a lot of exercises i'm using specific masturbation techniques i'm losing using a lot of different things to alter their neurology those are long-term things so that's like all the practice that's been, you know, that's lifting weights in the gym. It's all that kind of stuff before you're on the playing field, right? So that's not going to, if you haven't done that work, that's not going to help you at that moment. The other thing that I teach guys though, are something that I call the dirty biohacks. And these are things that I've found are instrumental and can be used in the moment to give yourself another 30 seconds, another minute, possibly more to get what I call to the elusive five minute mark. And that was there's a very specific time that I noticed through all the years that I've been doing, uh, you know, the, the, the work as an adult actor. I would notice that even the best guys in the world, we could have a day where we are super sensitive. And like I said, you're not getting paid if you don't get it together, right? So it's another level of, you know, stress that, that the, your listeners at home don't have to deal with. But what I would see time and time again is that if you can make it to five minutes, now you could get it under control. So when I tell guys, I'm like, you know, let's, let's narrow things down because every guy's like, oh man, I need to last to 45 minutes. I need that. No, 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 you don't. You need to last five. Let's get to five, right? Because if you can get to five, you can easily get to 10. If you can get to 10, getting to 40 is nothing. If you can last 10 minutes, you can last 40. Like you, now you've just, you haven't been putting into practice the things that will allow you to get there. But from a neurological perspective, no problem. You know, the hardest part that any guy has to deal with is that 0.5 seconds of penetration to five minutes, you know, because it's usually that first 30 seconds, one minute where we are super sensitive and we are clutching, grabbing at straws, trying to make it, get it together. So there's a couple of things that, that I found that are extremely effective on that. The number one is pain. You know, the, the, the old wives tale of, you know, we're going to think about baseball scores, bullshit. You need pain because your body can only use for, for most people, unless you, there is a subsection of people that get extreme pleasure from pain, but it's a very small minority. Most people, their nervous system is wired that you're either having one or the other. And what you need is just like a seesaw. You need to tip the scales in one direction because perfect example, you know, let's just say, you've got a headache one day, right? And you're like, oh, my head's pounding, my head's pounding. And the phone rings. And so you you run through your living room. Guess what you do? You hit your little toe on your coffee table. Suddenly you don't have a headache. Gone, right? Because the level of pain has exceeded what you had before. So we're doing the same thing with pleasure. You know, whatever amount of pleasure you're feeling, you need to have a level of pain that will exceed that. And so there are different ways that you can create that. There's a lot of ways that you can create it and still stay connected to the woman where she has no idea about what you're doing. Because, you know, from the guy's perspective, you know, we're all going to have to fight these things, right? But you don't want the woman to know that you're fighting, right? And because that kind of ruins the fantasy for her and it keeps you guys from being connected and enjoying the event. And if you can skillfully get your pain levels up, now you can hold off and it will take you from a 10 to a two really quickly. And again, you know that, and it might last for 30 seconds. It might last for a minute, might last for two minutes, but now we've just extended our ability to get to the five minute marker. So pain is something that, that, that needs to be used judiciously and in the right moments. So that's, that's, that's one of the first things. Well, I have a question about that. First of all, it it broke my heart a little bit that you said the guy needs to be in pain. (laughs) So how, what kind of a pain we're talking about? Or what's the intensity we're talking about? Whatever is the intensity required so that your pleasure is, is numbed. Okay. So, I, so you know, and, and that's going to be individual, but there will be, you will find an intensity that works, right? Now, as far as some good ways to stay connected to a woman, you can do it through positioning, you know? So 
Now, of course, you're just going to depend on your listeners on how athletic they are. But one one great way that works great in, and that and that drives women insane is pick a woman up in midair and have sex with her standing. So you 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 are literally doing a bicep curl with a woman. Hold that position for a minute and just, let's see how your biceps feel. They will be on fire, and you will hit a point where you literally do not own a penis anymore because all you will feel are your biceps. So it shifts what you're feeling away from your dick. And if you're that sensitive, hardly anybody's ever going to lose their erection because you're, you're, you've been that sensitive. Like the blood's there, but now it, it literally doesn't feel like it's part of your body anymore. And you can keep that going until, until you've, you know, you, your, your, your level of pain is, is too high. And then you can throw her back on the bed and now you can switch positions and you can find something. I, I love it. I, I didn't like, I heard, I feel like in this field, I heard all of the techniques. I haven't heard about this before. <laughs> That's why I was like, am I hearing this correctly? Because <laughs> nobody's a professional like I am. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> I was like, am I hearing like pain? <laughs> Did you say pain? And on that note, I wonder that if, if people are feeling pain, my thought would be you would lose an erection. You wouldn't lose the erection when you have pain? No. Mm-mm. In fact, in fact, you know, this is something I would not advise. This would be the, it would be the last bastion of hope. But I've seen actors and I've even done it myself before, but I, I learned to avoid it just because I could find other ways to control it, but there would be some guys like literally they would just pull their dick out and they would take their hand and they would hit it as hard as possible. Oh God, <laughs> that feels painful. Extremely painful. Still wouldn't lose their erection though. Mm. because you're that sensitive. The blood flow is not going anywhere, but that would shock the hell out of you. And now in that case, you are letting it, letting the woman on to what's going on. But I mean, if you do that you are probably going to have a good couple minutes after that where you'd be able to last. That makes sense because it's aligned with the squeeze technique, right? That like when they say like the partner squeezing the the penis. So it kind of makes sense, but it doesn't seem like it's... This isn't a squeeze. This is not a squeeze. This (laughs) is hauling off and slapping like you're slapping someone in the face. Oh God. (laughs) No, no, it's not a squeeze. No, no, this is is extremely painful, but very effective. And like I said, all we're looking at or all I'm looking to for the man to achieve. So we need to get to that five minutes, you know. Well, this one, goal. do not try at home. <laughs> guess, yeah, leave, leave that to the professionals. But, 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 but like I said, there's, there's, there's a number of other techniques that I teach my, my one-to-one clients where they can create different levels of pain and they can do it in a way that doesn't need to be so aggressive, but they can still do it stay connected with the woman. You know, I've got a number of different positions, techniques, and and all sorts of ways that they can create that level of pain. And it doesn't, it's not intense enough that they are going to lose their erection or anything, but it is going to be enough that it just shifts where their conscious awareness is at the time so that it, it moves it away from they're just feeling too much of their dick and it can take it from, you know, they're at a nine, take it down to a five. So you're having a good time still, but it's, it's, it's manageable. Mm-hmm. And that's what we need to do. We need to be able to manage it because, you know, if, if you're, if the work that you've done on your neurology is not sufficient at this time, then the dirty biohacks are going to be the things that are going to give you that extra time in the bedroom and you need to use them. Right. I mean, one of the things that, um, that I'll often uh, tell clients of mine, you know, and this goes back to really the, the whole, like, where's your, where's your strategy at? Right. And this, this concept of setting yourself up for success. And I will tell them all worst position first, whatever is the worst feeling position, that's what you need to go to. Cause the problem that most guys make, you know, I'd say 99% of them is they're going to bed with a woman, they're sensitive and they go into missionary first. Well, what position would possibly feel better than that? <laughs> Right. There's, there's, you mean you're, you're, you're lined up as anatomically correct as possible. You've got no weight bearing on any parts of your body. You know, I mean, this is paradise. Worst idea you could ever have. So you're going into that and then you're, you're immediately upon penetration. You're struggling. Well, you're only struggling because of the way you started. So I, I always say, you know, if you look at all the different positions, you can always find one that feels less good than the one you're in. You just have to see, seek and find out which one it is. So it could be cowgirl, it could be spoon, it could be some kind of reverse. Um, there's a myriad of different positions, but there is going to be one that feels less good than where you're at right now. And sometimes just shifting positions can help, you know, and then we've got different aspects of depth. And I like to use depth a lot, right? Because one of the things that I always noticed was 
you know, you, first of all, you need to minimize the in and out because the in and out is not, you know, I mean, if you, you let's just take it from the perspective of, I always tell my clients, you need to maximally stimulate the woman and minimally stimulate yourself. So how do you do that? Well, you got to go deep, you got to go deep and you need to, all, all your pressure needs to be grinding from your pubic bone on her clip, because if you're doing just long in and out strokes, you're going to fire off in no time and she's not getting any stimulation except from, you know, the, 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 the bulb inside part of the clit, but that may not be getting her off. You know, for a lot of women, it's not enough. And then, you know, then it's going to factor into, okay, how wide are you, right? If you have a really wide penis, then you're probably stimulating more. But if you're not, you need to be able to, you know, be hitting that clit with your pubic bone. So, but then one of the great things about that too, is what I always notice, like if you go all the way inside so that you're, 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 you're barely moving and all your time is mostly spent grinding, there does seem to be upwards towards the cervix, like a little extra space. And so what I've found is I can just hang out there and the head of my dick will not have as much stimulation if I'm just hanging out in that little space. Now, I don't know why I can always feel, but there's always this sort of little opening up at the top where I can, I can feel it. And I know, okay, I got this little, little space where it's like, I'm just not getting touched as much. So depth, again, is another tool in the toolbox that guys can pull out and utilize. And, and this is why I say, like, there's no, there's no magic pill. Anybody that's selling somebody some magic pill is, you know, pardon my French, full of shit, right? Like, you need to attack this from multiple angles because you got to fix your neurology. You got to have your exercises. You got to have the right supplements because there's a whole supplement regimen that I take my clients through. But then you got to be able to use the, the dirty biohacks that you have at your disposal when they are required. So maybe in this instance, you need some pain. Maybe in this instance, you need to prevent your testicles from rising. Maybe in this instance, it's like, okay, I need to pull out some depth. Maybe in this instance, it's like, okay, let me go into some position that is going to create a certain level of pain. Or then the final one, which I would tell, teach guys that, that I found, which was an epiphany of mine a long time ago, is maneuvers of consciousness. So, but that is being able to specifically move the sensory focus of your mind into different areas because you can actually move your, your attention and you can move what you are feeling all around your body. And most people don't realize that they can do that. So then I teach them how to do that. You know, it's like, if you tell people, you know, they, you go walk to the store, you know, and they go for a walk. And then I say, okay, did you feel your right toe when you were walking? No. Okay. Now go walk and only feel your right toe. Right? So, so you have the ability and that's what I teach guys the ability to move your conscious awareness because, you know, I did an experiment once. So what I did once I had this epiphany is I thought, okay, well, you know, I, I always view everything as a laboratory experiment and that's where all my trainings come from. Like I don't have a PhD. I don't have a doctor. I got nothing. I just have 23 years of boots on the ground experience on being able to do this. So when I had my epiphany, I said, okay, let's go into the lab, AKA the set. And I want to experiment with this. And so I was working with one girl. And so we just, you know, we were having some fun, went off to the side and we started having sex. And I said, okay, I am not going to change my pace. I'm not going to change my rhythm. I'm going to change nothing. I'm just going to use my conscious awareness and see what happens. And what was funny is by shifting my conscious awareness now onto myself, I went immediately within 30 seconds, I'm ready to have an orgasm. And I said, I'm not stopping. I'm just going to shift my conscious awareness onto her. And then I was able to, to, to never breaking pace, prevent myself from having an orgasm and we went back to normal. I said, fuck me, I'm onto something here, right? So then I, I repeated the process over and over again. I said, okay, let me, I'm just going to keep shifting it back to myself. Again, instantly, like the urge to have an orgasm coming right up. So there is a, the, 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 the maneuvers of consciousness is another tool, you know, even though it's subtle, it is still very effective. So there's all these different tools in your toolbox. And like I said, you're just pulling one out after the other based on what your scenario is in front of you. So it's not like I can tell you, you need to do this. You need to do that. You need to experiment, but you need to have access to all the tools because when you have access to all the tools, now your world opens up. And again, this just brings us back to what we were saying earlier, conscious choice, because now you got the tools to be able to say, you know what, today we're doing 10 minutes. I can last 10 minutes. Oh, what? You want 40 minutes tonight? I got you, babe. No problem. We can do this. Amazing. And the number of the interesting uh, tools in the toolbox that, that you're introducing, I, 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 I hear often people say like, you know, it's the first part that like you got to work outside the bedroom, which is certainly very, very important. Your health is important. Your 
kind of fitness is important, but also I hear there are lots of good, tangible, actionable things that people can do inside the bedroom that can help them to last long. And I 100% agree with you that the first few minutes are the most anxiety provoking time for many men. The sensitivity is high and many women are able to experience orgasm if there's been foreplay within a few minutes. So, I mean, if you want to go like for 30 minutes, 45 minutes with your lover, 100%, it's, uh, it's wonderful and it's on you. But I think it's you will have good enough sexual experience and if you can last within those range. Yeah, I mean, it's still at the end of the day, you know, you, you want quality over quantity, right? So, and, and, and that's going to be individual to the person. What does quality speak like to you, right? And so for some people, quality is, I want to have, you know, from a woman's perspective, I want five orgasms and I want to squirt everywhere. Another girl, she's like, man, I'm one and done because I've met all different types of women. So, you know, the problem is, you know, if, if guys don't have a massive breadth of partners they've been with, they don't understand that. You know, I've met the girl where you're eating pussy, she comes, no refractory period, 20 seconds later, you can do it again, 20 seconds after that, you can do it again. And you, know, you can almost make them go crazy because you can successively do it so many times. But then there's other girls where it's like, bam, they have their one and they're like, don't fucking touch my clit, <laughs> leave it alone. I'm done for tonight. Come back to me in five or 10 minutes and we can talk, right? Which is, you know, analogous to how a lot of men are. So you got to understand that you're, you're, you're dealing with an individual and as long as they are having a quality experience, then that's all that's really going to matter. And that's what research shows that people sometimes say like how often we should have sex in order to be successful couple in, in the bedroom. And research exactly says that quality versus quantity. So there's so many people that I have several kind of like time during the week that they have sex and they're so dissatisfied because lots of bad sex that I personally think is worse than not having sex. So I, I love that you're talking about the different kind of like variety for people, for couples. And again, going back to the conscious choice that you mentioned that like you knowing that you have the ability to having a good time yourself and aiding your partner to have a great time. Well, I know you have your own course and now you gave us a teaser. <laughs> I bet our listeners are thinking about how can I get my hand on that? So tell us more about that. Yeah, so I have an online course that we, we came out with this year called uh, Crushing Performance Anxiety. And so what I do in that is it's an eight-module course that uh, includes all the tips and tactics and strategies that I've used to be able to get hard anywhere at any time. And so I take, I take everybody through the journey of, okay, the mindsets, the practical strategies, and then the, the actual ways that you're going to go about to create the, the positive feedback loop in your brain, right? That then, because that's the thing that we want to get. We want that belief system so that when you have blood flow, it creates more blood flow, it creates more blood flow. So, and then within that, there's also some hypnotic meditations. There's an entire workbook for them to work through so that they can get clearer on, first of all, you know, what's going on in their bodies. And then where is the anxiety coming up? Because, you know, you want to be able to bring conscious awareness to it to be able to fight it. You know, if you, if you yourself don't really know, you know, you just, you say, I have anxiety, but you've never nailed, okay, when is this coming up? Like, what's actually going on? What do I need to focus on? Because maybe it's around, you know, say body shame. Like some people have which, you know, shame or guilt around their body. So then I have different exercises and I have different strategies for them to start to get comfortable with that so they can begin the process of feeling comfortable being naked because, you know, one of the first anxiety inducing things that's going to happen is you take your clothes off, right? And, and when you take that off, are you like, hey, here I am world, I'm naked? Or are you that guy in the shower room that was always, you know, just hiding everything? Because if that's you, now, how are you going to be showing up with your woman? You're going to want to hide everything because that's, that's the mindset that you're in. So yeah, so, so throughout the course, I take them through the whole process so that at the end of the day, they can feel comfortable that they have the strategies, they have the techniques, and they have the tools in their toolbox to be able to get hard and get hard anytime, anywhere. 
love that. And it, it seems like it would be a good tool kind of kind of courses for anyone who want to improve, improve their uh, lovemaking uh, kind of abilities, especially for men. I think like going back to the size, to the self-image, body image, that's such a common challenge that many men have. So I think like having something to work through, I think can be very powerful. Yeah. And, and, you know, even if they want to just do some things that can spice up the bedroom, like one of the things I talk about when I talk about bedroom leadership and arousal is, you know, creating a sense of danger and a sense of spontaneity. And if you want to create that danger and spontaneity, one of the best ways is, is to incorporate some sort of little bit on the edge public sex into your life. Now, in doing that, you're going to need to overcome certain anxieties that you're going to have. Because, you know, but if you can lead the woman, because very few women that I've ever met are going to actively take the lead in that, but they are more than willing and actually very excited if you are willing to do it, you know, so if you say, hey, you know what, there's a bathroom over there, like, come on, let's go, right? Most women are like, are you crazy? But oh, okay, that would be really fun right now. But now you have to be able to come overcome your anxieties to be able to functionally do it. Otherwise, now if your anxiety takes over, you've kind of spoiled the event and you've, you've spoiled the arousal that you would have created. So, you know, it's good for people of all levels because whether, you know, whether you're struggling with anxiety or maybe you would struggle in an area that might be, you know, maybe you're comfortable at home in your bedroom, but if you were to do something a little crazier, you're like, mm, I don't know. These are still the strategies that, that could help you. And, um, you know, if anybody's interested, they can go to my website, www.ericeverhard.com or go to www.crushingperformanceanxiety.com and get more there. And for any of your listeners, if they want to purchase it, I'm going to have a special deal for your listeners. So if they just put in the code sexology20, they can get 20% off all of that stuff. Awesome. What a wonderful offering and what a great course. And for your Instagram, tell us about your Instagram. What's your handle? Because I personally love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm always throwing up stuff out there. Thankfully, I haven't gotten banned out there. Yeah, they can find me at Eric Everhard Official, E-R-I-K. Beautiful. So the link will be in the show notes for, for the course. And thank you so much for staying late. I know you're at other part of the globe. And thank you for being so generous with all of this wonderful information. You're welcome. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed our conversation. You got some good strategies that you can implement tonight. Eric was so gracious that they offered coupon code to our listeners, Sexology20, to get some discount. I'm not affiliated with them, but also I'm curious about Eric's course because I've been part of the room that he hosted in the past in Clubhouse and I found that contribution helpful and meaningful. So I'm curious about the course. I'm sure it's great. I know I mentioned during end of the episode, I'm going to talk more about some of the strategies and tips that I recommend my clients around lasting longer in bed. I know this is something that in the mind of many men and people sometimes they label themselves as people who have premature ejaculation or PE, what they really struggle with is there is this arousal gap between when they experience orgasm versus when their partner experience orgasm. So when people think about premature ejaculation, they tend to think more about tendency to orgasm before they want to, but that's not our clinical definition. But if this is how you're thinking about it, I want us to talk a little bit more about, first of all, what causes it. So men of all ages, they can struggle with this. It's more common that you think because men tend to not talk about these things and brag about their performance. But as a sex therapist, I see it being an issue for many, many men. So if you are struggling at times, there is no issue with that. It's completely common for for many men to experience that at times. There are certain things that make you more vulnerable for premature ejaculation. If you have diabetes, if you have severe anxiety, if you're struggling with mental health, especially anxiety, that can lead to premature ejaculation. What you're taking, it can contribute to premature ejaculation. If you're using excessive caffeine, that can also be another reason that might lead you to experience premature ejaculation. 
So I always tell people, well, definitely check in with your physician, look into your diet and make sure you are your mental wellness as in check. And we know that if, if you are having sex with women, if you're in relationship, sexual relationship with women, only 25% of women orgasm during intercourse. Majority of women, it's nice if you have an erection, but they experience orgasm through a clitoral stimulation. So if you, as long as you're using your mouth, hand, or sex toy, or all of those, you, you will help them to experience an orgasm. So the key is for you not to put pressure on yourself because we know that pressure can create challenges around performance. And many, many men that I work with in the past, they have been training themselves to last shorter time from childhood. Many teen boys, they are rushing, doing their masturbation because they don't want to get caught. So that's almost a habit that many people build from their childhood. If you want to change that, I encourage you to, first of all, when you are masturbating, like experimenting with different kind of masturbation, instead of go rushing to your genital, practice touching different parts of your body, practice breathing exercises, building up the excitement and kind of like reducing the excitement. So kind of like practicing gaining mastery when you are, you don't have a pressure of being with your partner. Some of my clients, they try masturbation with dry hands. So I know most penis owners, they use cream, lubricant for masturbation, but practicing with dry hand can help you also to to practice lasting longer. I know that many of my clients, they tend to look for medical interventions, medication. I want you to be very, very mindful of what are you taking because there are tons of products out there that are not medically proven and that they cause more harm. Some of the some of my clients, they shared with me that they used numbing creams and sometimes people feel that it's rubbing in their partner. Some of the time I hear from my clients that they feel, okay, I can go forever, but I have no sensations. If you are looking for more of a premature ejaculation spray, one of the products that I genuinely recommend to all of my clients is Promesen. They are our sponsor this month. But what I like about it is that they published this study in the International Journal of Importance Research by two of the well-known sex therapists and sex researchers, Kirsten Mark and Ian Kerner. And what was interesting that they found that when the participants use their product, the percentage of couple experiencing orgasm drastically increased when they were using the spray versus the time that they were not using the spray and the ejaculatory latency changed significantly. So it's important to keep in mind what are you using. So I have clients having positive experiences with using promescent products. So that can be an option. As far as the medication, please don't take things that you buy from gas station or from online. If you work with a physician, sometimes they prescribe antidepressants. And one of the side effects of SSRIs are delayed ejaculation. So that could be another tool that you can use to last longer in the bedroom. So think about what you're eating. Think about your overall health. If you need to use delay spray, use a company that you know. And more importantly, talk to your partner about it. Because at the heart of it is this arousal gap between partners. So talking about what they like and how you can give them more of what they need 
it will help you guys to have wonderful experiences. So let me know if you have a suggestions that we haven't talked about and you want to share with us. You can record your voice or you can email me and I'll share it with our listeners. And again, thank you so much for listening to this show and supporting us. And if you like what you are hearing in my show, it means a lot to me if you write us a review wherever you're listening to this podcast. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for listening to Sexology Podcast. For more great content, visit www.sexologypodcast.com. Please be advised that information presented on this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health provider.